Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is taking some time to breathe and relax. And I know I need some time off social media in the next couple days. So I hope everyone's taking care of themselves. And today is gonna be, is Rant the right word? About perfectionism and mostly ableism in the zero waste community movement. Before I get into it though, I am definitely not the authority on any of this. It's just something I want to talk about. So if and when I say something incorrect, please feel free to educate me. I would super appreciate it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, let's chat friends. If you want more content about intentional living and intersectional environmentalism, please hit the like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get into it. Well, since the movement began a few, few years ago, probably, I don't know, like 10 years ago now, a while, um, there's been this major symbol of the trash jar. And for those of you who don't know the trash jar, it's literally just people having a jar that they put all of their trash in for a year, two years, four years, for forever, I guess, potentially. And it's just to show that people can live with producing very little waste. So they put it in this like clear little jar to show, look at what I have wasted, and this is it. And I, I know when I first found out about zero waste, I thought, oh my God, people can do that? I wanna do that. <laughs> it didn't work. I guess my first issue with it is that I am sure all of these people, primarily cis white women, young cis white women, um, I'm sure they're producing more trash than what's in, in the jar. And I'm not saying that they're lying, I'm not. It's just that, you know, you go to the grocery store and you can buy produce unpackaged, but that doesn't mean it was never packaged. A lot of it is shipped in packaging and is just taken out to sit on the store shelves or, there's, you know, if you say no to a receipt at the store, a lot of times it still prints it and still has to go in the waste basket, even if it's not coming into your hands and ending up in the, in the trash. It was still created, it existed, and needs to be thrown away. So I believe, I feel like it creates this false narrative of perfection that makes you feel like you should be able to attain it and for most of us, maybe all of us, it's just not possible. And it's just this false idea that there's only one way to be sustainable. I mean, yes, trash is important. I try to create as little as possible, but it's definitely not the only way to help the planet. And I feel like it makes people feel bad. I should use eye statements. It makes me feel bad, or it has made me feel bad when I couldn't fit everything into one tiny jar. It kind of made me feel like a failure. It sort of deterred me from living this way for a while, and I just find that unhelpful. The, the main reason I wanted to talk today, though, aside from this idea of perfection, is that the movement excludes so many people. So many people. And I've already made a video about um, package-free grocery shopping, kind of why that's a problem as like the holy grail of zero waste living when so many people can't even get fresh food to begin with. Um, and I talk about food apartheid and so I, I will link it wherever that goes. I'm really tired. Um, <laughs> if you all want to check it out. Um, but I also want to talk about how excluding it is to disabled people. I feel like the movement is incredibly ableist. I mean, so many aspects of our world are quite ableist, but. And just to name a basic definition for all of us so we're on the same page, ableism is the discrimination and social prejudice against people with disabilities or who are perceived to have disabilities. And it characterizes disabled people as inferior. Now let's talk about eco-ableism, which is basically just ableism, but from like environmentalists who don't take into account the fact that a lot of people have less privilege than them. So my first thought years ago about this subject was because I saw 
um, straw bands, plastic straw bands, and they've still been kind of happening over the years since the first one I saw. And man, they are like, straw bands are just like loud, lauded, lauded lauded by Zero Wasters as like, this will fix everything. And yes, yes, I, I'm not denying the fact that straws harm a lot of wildlife and they get into the waters, like I'm not denying that. But many, many, many people need straws. There is not a zero waste reusable alternative that is like bendy and can used for all types of medications, or be hot or cold, or uh, doesn't provide a choking hazard, or burn, or other injury, and is also, you know, affordable. Yeah, yeah, even if there was one that did everything that many people need them to do, I feel like it would not be the same price as, you know, a pack of 50 little disposable straws. I really doubt it. I really doubt it. Yeah, straw bands have been just popping up over and over over the years. It's making it harder for so many people to drink because they have to like, somehow, I, I think in some places they have to like get it registered as a medical device, whereas before they could literally just pick it up from their local store. Like that is, oh my God. And I've seen people anti-hauling, you know, um, like this little plastic tooth flosser pick things, I don't know what they're called, and like pre-cut fruit in plastic packaging. They were like, these need to go, like these need to be banned. I'm like, but so many people need them. Just because you don't, just because it seems like a luxury to you doesn't mean that a lot of people don't need these items. Because, you know, some people can't floss with both hands, some people don't have the dexterity to peel fruit, like that's difficult to do and you need it to be pre-cut and just in a little plastic container and we shouldn't be attacking that. <sighs> and yes, okay, there's some like compostable options or biodegradable options for like wipes because a lot of people need single-use wipes too, but they're not as affordable and not everyone can, can spend more money on that. They just can't. The zero waste movement cannot continue to move forward in a productive way without taking into account the experiences and, 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 and bringing in people with other experiences into the conversation. Like we can't just move forward and make it work for young, white, able-bodied, heterosexual, cisgendered white women and just make everyone else feel bad for not like attaining what we can attain. No, no, we need to include everyone in these conversations to move forward without doing more harm. And we can't blame climate change on marginalized groups. Instead, we should, we should be including more people into the conversation. We need to stop making decisions like this without taking everybody into account. Cause God, it's so freaking harmful. I'm getting emotional. Let's get back on track. Many people with disabilities and illnesses in it, like just require to use more plastic, need to use more plastic and resources. And again, we can't shame that. We all need to do what's best for our health and well-being. Like that comes first. That comes first. Like I've had respiratory issues and mental health issues most if not all of my life. And I'm not about to stop getting vials for my nebulizer because they're single-use plastic little things that I, you know, put the medicine in and throw it away. I'm not gonna stop buying those because I need them. I need them to breathe. Or I'm not gonna stop buying inhalers because they're plastic. I need them to breathe. I'm not gonna stop uh, renewing my anxiety medication because it comes in blister packs that I can't recycle. No, my, my mental health, my physical health, my well-being, my life comes first. And you know, if, if I didn't put it first, then I couldn't work to m move sustainability forward in, in the little ways that I'm doing. I, I wouldn't be able to do those. So it's more productive if we put ourselves first. Like that's the way it needs, it, that's the way it needs to be. Again, I am not the authority on this. I am constantly learning and there's a, lot of privilege in that 
Um, it's just something that I've been thinking about for years and I didn't know who to talk to about it. So I'm talking to the internet about it. <laughs> mm. but, but yeah, moving forward, I, I need to incorporate all these ideas into the, vi the other videos I create and acknowledge my privilege more often and try to make things more accessible to more people. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I need to do moving forward um, and continue to work with the uh, organizations that I have been working with to move legislation forward in a productive way that makes, again, things more accessible to more people because that is the only way. That's the only way. All right, I've been talking for <laughs> a while. So I hope it was coherent. I know I kind of went off a little bit, but I needed to and I look forward to having a conversation with people, hopefully. Oh, and I'll leave um, some resources and people that I like following and articles that I've read in the description box. So please feel free to check those out. Some truly incredible people. And hit the thumbs up, please, if you found this to be a good rant. Was this a rant? It kind of was. Um, and hit subscribe if you want more content about intentional living and environmentalism, intersectional environmentalism. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.